How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Marshall. In today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about Pascal Siakam and his new deal that he signed with the Pacers. Uh, I'm not sure if it's official yet, but he's planning on signing a four year, 189.5 million maximum contract uh, to stay with the Indiana Pacers. It's a whole lot of money, so congrats to him. Um, for making the big bucks and he's already been making the big bucks in the NBA obviously But I think this is gonna be the second highest contract in Pacers history. Not sure who number one is um, I don't really pay attention to the Pacers too much. The only reason I really keep up with him is because of Pascal here and there um, And he did some great things in the playoffs like I mentioned that video I made on him a couple weeks ago about really excited to see how he does um, For years to come and I know he's gonna be pushing to get that second ring soon and um, Pacers are a good young team. They definitely have a chance to do it. Not this next season, I don't think, but you know, for years to come, for the next three to five years, they're going to be a contending team for sure. Especially since they just made the Eastern Conference Finals. I know there's injuries and all that, but there's injuries every playoffs. Kind of like how people are talking about the Celtics having a Mickey Mouse ring, um, even though like injuries just happen all the time every playoffs. And it's funny because a lot of Laker fans are saying it's a Mickey Mouse ring, and they literally had the Mickey Mouse ring in the bubble. So kind of funny how they're all hating on that. Pascal's going to be a guy who can average. 20 to 25 points per game, probably for the rest of his career. I mean, until his later years and he gets older and all that. But he's still not young, but he's, you know, in his in his prime, I would say right now. Wasn't an all-star this year, but I think he'll be an all-star for, for years to come. Can't wait to see how he does. Hope he can have a breakout season soon. I think his best year, yeah, it was like, not this past season, but the year before that, he had about 24 points a game. Um, and it's crazy because he came, not, not out of nowhere, but he was a late pick, 27th pick um, from New Mexico State, obviously. It's always cool to hear that announcement, kind of like I was talking about that last video. Um, and then also when it was his um, debut against the Blazers um, for the Pacers, uh, they announced it in the in the Moda Center. So it was kind of cool. Um, so it's just always cool to see guys from New Mexico State, you know, rapping, especially him having the greatest career wise in the NBA out of any former Aggie. Do I think he'll win another ring? I think if he does, he'll win one more. I don't think the Pacers can win more than that. There's just so many dominating teams nowadays. I'm hoping that the Blazers, my favorite team, can, you know, get to that soon. I know not anytime soon, but. You know, if we can continue to, you know, rebuild, tank, whatever you have to do to, to get to that level in the next three to five years, that'd be huge. But I think the Pacers definitely have a solid chance at getting a ring eventually, but it's not guaranteed. There's so many great teams like the Celtics. Um, the Lakers are always a team to watch out for, even though they're kind of like the Cowboys. Sometimes in the NFL, they don't always finish the job, but they've also won the championship in 2020, have 17 total. Um, like I said, the Celtics have 18 The Bucks with Dame and Giannis. Um, there's a lot of great teams out there, but I think the Pacers are, even the Knicks are solid, but I think the Pacers um, have held their own as a 6 seed, like I said, all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. Again, I know injuries played a part in that, but, you know, Tyrese was hurt and they still put up good fights. They actually look like they're better without Tyrese, sometimes with Pascal leading the team, so that was great to see. The thing I want to discuss in this video, not just about the Pascal Siakam situation, but about the current team. I know we made a video, last video, talking about the whole team and its entirety and how many great guards we have. Kind of want to talk more about the post because our guards are definitely better than our posts, in my opinion. Um, but our posts aren't bad either. Um, I think a lot of people don't know a whole, about it, a whole lot about them. We have the Shimonga brothers, Nate and Emmanuel. Emmanuel's a solid player. He's going to be one of our guys that's going to be getting a whole lot of minutes and be solid for the team and just do a lot of great things, be a great contributor. Okay, am I wrong? I don't think he's going to be as good as Casey, but I think he'd be really solid. I think a lot of these guys remind me of Jonathan Kenyanga from last year's team, a guy that's not going to score the whole score the ball a whole lot, but he's going to do a lot of great things on the defensive end, maybe get a whole lot of blocks and rebounds. Um, Emmanuel averaged seven and six a couple years back in about 19 minutes a game, and then last year at UCSD, he averaged four and five. Um, so he's always hustling, getting the rebounds, gives it all on that end of the floor, and that's what Coach Hayden wants. When I did that interview with him, he was talking about, you know, guys might, you know, have off day shooting wise. Um, more for guards, but that doesn't mean they can't go out and rebound and play their best on defense. And obviously, as posts and centers, they're not going to be shooting the ball a whole lot, but they can always, you know, do their best on the defensive end, and grabbing a lot of rebounds and all that. Guys like Robert Carpenter and Peter and Chris are going to be like that as well. Six, seven, fours are going to be able to do a lot of great things. Um, Robert's going to be our stretch four that can shoot the ball very well from three point land and all that. Again, kept us in a lot of games this year. Again, wish that he would have stayed with us a little bit longer and wasn't out for the whole season or the whole or half of Conference USA, I guess you could say. But it's great that he's coming back. Peter's a guy who can put the ball on the floor and score in the paint really well. Didn't see a whole lot of shooting when I was looking at his highlights and looking at his stats and career and all that. But he's a guy that I'm sure if he works on it, you know, works with Robert, maybe he can develop and, you know, develop into a three-point three point shot. Some Blazer players that I like watching, like DeAndre Aiden or even former Blazer Yusuf Nurkic were guys that couldn't really shoot the three ball that well. But Yusuf Nurkic has developed into a three-point shooter in a way. DeAndre Aiden, more of a, you know, mid-range guy. But, you know, he can definitely stretch the floor a little bit and um, learn to get there. So really happy to see how Peter does with that. Chris is a guy similar to Peter, not as dominant or good, but I think he's going to be a guy who can, you know, score in the paint really well. And just he's just going give to it, give it his all and work hard to earn minutes. I think at the start of the season, Coach is going to play a lot of guys. A lot of times in college basketball, a lot of teams will do that. 
And last season we had to play our whole roster a lot of times because we had a lot of guys hurt um, or just waivers weren't cleared or whatever it may be. So um, we probably won't have a clear starting lineup or clear rotation until Conference USA starts and all that, but that's usually how it works for a lot of teams. So we'll see how that all goes. Edward is going to be solid for us as well. He's another dominant force who's going to help us out a lot and help you know impact winning at a high level. Um, and then Emmanuel's brother, Nate, who I talked about a little bit, made a video on him. Can't wait to see what he comes in and brings. Hopefully he brings a lot of energy and just gives it all every night. All right, so that's going to pretty much end the video. I know it's a quicker one, um, probably one of my shorter videos. Uh, I try to get to about 10 to 15 minutes, and then, you know, obviously when the season starts, it'll be a little bit longer. Uh, but I want to make a quick video just because i um, been busy all weekend, busy with work, too. I was actually out just camping with my family near the water here in Birch Bay, really close to the house, so it wasn't too far of a drive. It's just a couple minutes. A lot of times, you know, when we go on trips or camping trips, they have to drive a whole, you know, a whole lot back, but this time it's just right there, so it was pretty nice. And I got some stuff going on later today I'm gonna do with my brother and all that. So just wanted to make a quick video talking about the Pascal Siakam, you know, how he signed that new Max deal. It's been big news and a lot of Aggie fans are excited for him. I want to talk a little bit more about our posts because I think a lot of people know how great our guards are. Um, but want to know more about our posts. I think the way Coach Kuhn kind of signed the guys, he signed a lot of guards at first and then it was just, you know, it was guards and then posts. Um, so it's great to see, you know, that they're gonna all be playing together. Um, seen some practice videos like I mentioned in my previous videos. Team doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's hard to say just off like 30, 40 second clips. Um, but we'll know more as the season go, or as the off season goes on um, and gets closer to the season. Season starts a little less than almost about four months because it's almost the end of June. Season starts November 4th. Um, not sure who we're going to play, uh, but that's the start of all Division One basketball for all teams. Hopefully, we get a home game. I, really, I would like to start kind of like a couple years ago how we started home against a, um, who was it? We played against a Division Two opponent, New Mexico Highlands. Um, so if we could play against a Division Two, Division Three point, opponent and um, should be able to get that win, it'd be nice to start off the season with a win. Unlike last year, we played against Kentucky. Not, you know, it wasn't it wasn't great. Obviously, as you guys know, we lost that game by 40. Um, put up a great um, fight in the first half. We're only down by eight, 29 to 37, but ended up losing 46 to 86. Really tired, only had about eight, nine guys, I think. A lot of guys who couldn't play, like Brandon Suggs, Kami Kali. Um, they couldn't play because of waivers or injuries and all that. So we didn't have our full team. Um, but hopefully this season we got to a better start and just improve like last season or improve from last season like I've been talking about. We'll be back up in cruises in a little bit, a little less than two months and then we'll be a different background. I mean, I know it's not too bad of a background. You guys kind of see the trees and all that. I'm um, get the fan going and stuff, but I'll be nice to have all my Aggie, you know, gear, not my gear, but like my decorations, all that posters. Put that on the back, you guys can see that. It'll be a more of a, you know, nice background, go with the flow a little bit better since I'm talking about the Aggies and basketball and all that. So it should be really exciting and I'll be getting a lot of more posters throughout the year. Um, not all the posters will be basketball. There'll be some like football and some from all sports, volleyball, softball, baseball, soccer, um, all that. I even had some like tennis and swimming ones, I think, um, which I don't really keep up with them, but I do keep up, I, I may keep up with them a little bit, just not as much as all the other main sports. Um, so really excited for all that to get going. And uh, I really appreciate you guys for watching and I'm out.